precious Lord, surely I will. I'm bound for Mount Zion on the far away hill. If anyone makes it precious Lord, then surely I will. Bound for Mount Zion, a far away hill. If anyone makes it precious, Lord, surely I will. Oh, is that all? Just a one hit wonder? Somebody can testify. keeps her safe too because I wouldn't do her job. <laughs> Brother Matthew talking about you think that's woman's work. I know it is. <laughs> I wouldn't do her job. She works too hard for me, Brother David. <laughs> I'm lazy. i tell you what. Used to be when I was sinning Satan stood off somewhere grinning As the pleasures that he brought returned on me Teardrops came like a rain of falling As I heard my Savior calling You can't go on anymore, just lean on me And I won't walk without Jesus I won't talk 
Without Jesus, I refuse to live one day as before. I won't go. Without Jesus, just ain't so. Without Jesus, everything that I could do, I just won't do without the Lord. Beggar lame at the gate of sitting. All his life he'd been regretting Cause he never stood or strolled on down the street But Peter and John came by his way Look upon us, old Peter did say Rise and walk in the name of the Lord And he leaped to his feet And I won't walk without Jesus I won't talk Without Jesus, I refuse to live one day as before. And I won't go. Without Jesus, it just ain't so. Without Jesus, everything that I could do, just won't do without the Lord. And I won't walk. Without Jesus, I can't talk. Without Jesus, I refuse to live one day as before. I can't go without Jesus, it just ain't so. Without Jesus and everything that I could do, it just won't do without the Lord. And everything that I could do, it just won't do without the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Testify for about an hour, Brother David. We're glad you're here. I kept waiting till you walked through them doors. And that's honest God's truth. I kept looking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. A different world. Yeah, I like that part where it says old things are past and all things are new. Amen. So that gives me confidence. Yes, sir. And the Lord said to me, give me my family. I appreciate him. And I love the family here in church. I come over here. I really enjoy it. I feel good. I always tell him, I love the singing and preaching. I like the message. That's Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir.
God spoke to Noah, said, build yourself a boat. People passing by said, no, it won't float. But Noah kept on pounding, just building that old lark. Storm clouds started rolling, it started to get dark. Take us in your lifeboat, take us in your lifeboat, so we can weather the raging storm. Brothers and sisters are crying so loud, crying, Lord, won't you take us in your lifeboat? Water started rising, people started to drown. People started climbing, seeking higher ground. Water kept on rising till it covered all the land. Folks looked up to Noah, said, No, give us a hand. Take us in your lifeboat, take us in your lifeboat so we can weather the raging storm. Brothers and sisters are crying so loud, crying, Lord, won't you take us in your lifeboat? Lifeboat now's leaving, you better hurry and get on board. Better purchase your ticket if you want to see the Lord. Lifeboat's pulling anchor, leaving this old world below. Better get on board, brother, if you intend to go. Take us in your lifeboat, take us in your lifeboat, so we can weather the raging storm. Brothers and sisters are crying so loud, crying, Lord, won't you take us in your lifeboat? Take us in your lifeboat, take us in your lifeboat, so we can weather the raging storm. Brothers and sisters are crying so loud, crying, Lord, won't you take us in your lifeboat? Brothers and sisters are crying so loud, crying, Lord, won't you take us in your
set in store my life for that reality. Now, how could I preach live and go up there and claim me a grief plot? Yes. Huh? Yes. Glory to God. Can't do it. Thank you, Jesus. What what is that? Well, you're just not I am prepared. tell you what you know that's something if people can get a hold of what you're saying because the Bible speaks of power layers in the time it gives you you can either speak blessings or you can speak a cursings because it's your decision whatever God lays on your heart to take heed to the word and let it lie and David said uh my heart is always fixed on thee about you know like I think about the sister always when he says testimony the Bible says test, you know testify for the power that lies within you and every time she's got a testimony because you know what this year somebody's starting to feel that I'm going to do more for God let's not talk about it let's do it praise God because we can lie on our words and we can lie on our parents we can lie on everybody but if we ain't putting forth he says show me forth John he says show me your works Without your faith, my faith by my, and I'll show you your faith by my works, by my works. So, you know, I thank God if sometimes we can lay a word out and it has power and we're either, either going to receive it or we ain't going to receive it. And it's up to us to receive it because it's going to be that blessing or the curse that we receive. Amen. I think so many times I see God moving. I tell you, the spirit was starting to fall, Brother Greg, when you started down that road. I'm getting to feel it over there. And I, I don't want to take anything from anybody. Let God, let God give and the increase of whatever the power that's in us. You know, I think a lot of times about the church. A lot of times the church, we always can blame all kind of healing. You know, you got these, these uh, word ministries. 
on TV, send our love offering. You know, I tell you what, that's a lot of words, but there ain't no works within that. I tell you what, once you give it, when you give, folks, it don't matter who you give to, you give as unto the Lord. Not unto what that preacher is saying, what, not unto what you think that what you're going to get back. The Bible says give and respect and nothing in returning. So when we give, we're going to respect nothing in return because we're doing with inside of us something that's inside of us, not because we're trying to be seen. But praise God, when God begins to move, he moves in your behalf because you took heed to the word, not because you looked at that man and you seen that man standing there, but you seen God Almighty speaking, and they were speaking to your soul, to your hearts. Praise God. Hallelujah. And when God gives, when you when you get something from God, you know it's from God, because if it ain't, it'll turn into naught. But when God gives you something, it starts to be eternal. When it becomes eternal, you say, I can take this forever, all my life, because the Bible says, lay up treasures in heaven where thieves and moths is taking corrupt. And we can get inside of this word, and it'll start lighting us up. And then only time when it starts to become real is when we start to really believe it. It ain't, it ain't nothing but words when we start to just hear it and read it or whatever. You know, I think about it so many times, you know, the Lord was trying to deal with me something this morning. I didn't get into bed till 3 o'clock this morning. I was reading my Bible, and I usually just me read a verse or chapter, and then I'm going to, then I, I realized I was reading a couple of hours because God was wanting to do something. And the thing is, we are in this time where we're either going to believe this word of God or it's going to go to naught. Let me tell you something. When God's words become forth, Brother David, it starts to stir something in our heart that we shall be found worthy of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Because only the ones in Christ Jesus are going to get this for what God has bestowed for us, folks. The other people can be mocked around. You can be mocked and you can say, well, that's what they said in our father's days. But there is coming a day. Why can't this day be the day that the Lord has made and that we will rejoice and be glad in it? Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord was telling me something I was telling Brother Greg last Sunday. And it was about Lot. Hallelujah. And if uh, if God be willing, we can see how that the church zoomed around Lot. Because, you know, the Lord told uh, Abraham that his faith was unto salvation he gave that to him unto salvation he turned that faith and you know he says the seed would be as the seed of the sand this, well if that seed you say well what faith are you of if you are the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ you of Abraham's seed because God gave that to him for righteousness right praise God if God gave that to him for righteousness then what do you say well where do I find myself in the word you start with finding yourself in faith. And when you find yourself in faith, then you find yourself of Abraham's seed. Because then that was him. That was you that he was talking of. And if God was talking of you, then we go down to Lot. And we see that the church has lost its salt. Because we're getting down to the end. And they, like the brother was saying, the Bible speaks of there's going to be a family of the hearing of the word. And if that's going to be a family of the hearing of the word, we got our own ideas and our own ways somewhere else. Because you know what? We can put our trust in this old fleshly man, and when we put our trust in this old fleshly man, we're going to reap corruption. But when we start to put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to reap life in that eternal. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I see that the church, has, it goes back to Lot. And you know, the, the Lord looked down there and he, he heard these prayers coming out of there. Folks, these prayers have to have been coming from Abraham's bosom. Hallelujah. When he gets down there and says, Lord, I need to get my nephew out of this land. I need to get the Lord begin. says, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to look for myself. He says, when I went down there and he said, look at the, the angels come down there and this old perverted world begin to stir. And when they begin to stir, they begin to say, well, you know, I've seen two men going now. You know, them right there weren't known. They weren't known. They didn't know who they was, Brother Bob. But they said, well, let's send them out, you know. So it goes back to the sin that this world is being corrupted. And it's, on, and it's going back to its first stage of beginning. Because let me tell you something. It's not the world that's corrupted. It's the corrupted people. 
You better hear me out because something is going on. And we realize that God sent forth them to go see for himself. And says, Lord, it's true. It's true. But you know, Lot sat out there and he says, no, Lord. He said, I know I had a visitation from God. He said, I know I had a visitation from God because, the Lord, you were concerned about me. So Lot began to send his daughters out there. says, here, send, us, send them out. He says, no. He says, I'll send my daughters out. It goes and shows that the church world of the day are looking for something that is not real. They're looking for corruption because that had to do with them virgins. The Bible says those that appear in heart shall see God. So when Satan comes around and appear in heart, he turned them down. That was them virgins of, of lots. And we come on down and we see that the church of God, that the God presented that unto his righteousness. That was his faith unto righteousness. And his righteousness unto faith, it shows the coming of the Lord when he goes in there to uh, bring Lot out. Can somebody say amen? amen? When God brings him out, folks, can nobody stop you? When God is doing something, can nothing stand in the way? Because he is the creator of all creation. Yeah. Glory be to God. And then I see when he come on down, and he says, Lot, it's time to go. Praise God. And you know his daughters have to do with that seed of righteousness. And then he had to do it. And then his wife was laid back on her family. You know, you know, a lot of times we like to see our family saved. And when we see our family saved, a lot of times we have to get down on their level. But let me tell you something. What you need to do is get out of their level and call on God and believe what God said and it's going to pull them out because there's no need of life all kind of stuff to save your children. Amen? So we look and we see Lot's daughters have to be those virgins that appear in heart and we look and we see his wife have to do with the church, the church of the church of today. And when, when she goes to look back, when God begin to call, he begin to call, he begin to call everybody, says, you are my child, you are my child, and you recognize yourself in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you begin to make that call, says, Lord, here am I, I'm yours. Glory be to God. And then I look over there and I see that it has to do with the salt. Folks, the Bible says the salt if it loses Savior, it don't have any power. That's right, because you know why? But Lot's wife begin to look back and begin to see the family and see the corruption. Aside from looking in the eyes of God, she found corruption. She has to do with the church. And when the church looking back, and it'll be left behind because them that are virgins and in Christ Jesus are the only one that's going to be protected. Amen. Praise God. And when you're protected in the word, and the word in you, you become one with the word because the power of the power lays within the time. Yeah. And then we see when the wife begin to look back, she begin to see that the church has lost its favor. It has lost its salt. Right. It has no taste because we're looking back into the wrong world. But what we need to be doing is like Abraham and Lot is look straight ahead to the power of God that lays within us. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And this thing, you can see how God have already, before the foundation of the world, have put himself in place to come in power. And that power that he become in is beginning to put in you and I. So this thing ain't no man, one man show. God wants to reveal himself in everybody that you, that his light, that no man can get the glory, that you can draw for each and other where God can say, that is mine. Because you know what? In this world, we all have a choice. And when we have a choice, God can't get no glory unless we give it to him. If we don't give it to him, then he's going to have to turn to another. He says, I have the rocks and the mountains to cry out before me. But praise God, let this temple be living in God the world. No rocks have to cry out in my place. Glory, hallelujah. That I can say, praise God, Lord, I'm yours. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And when we begin to see that Christ begin to live in us, you get that, that seed will fall on to somebody else. And that's life and that water and the spreading of the water and of the word begin to fall over here. And there'll be another seed that pop up over here. And before we know it, the weed and the harvest is right. We are in the time where the, water, the harvest is right right now. And then let me tell you, 
If any time we ever need to call on God, it's right now. Because let me tell you, that everything, the world and the presidential and everything is looking darker and darker. But only light you're going to have is what's inside of a man. And if that's Christ Jesus, it's going to light up, light up. The darker the world gets, your corner is going to be more and more lighter in Christ Jesus. Praise God. And we can look out and say, Lord, I have no pleasure in them things. The Bible says, remember the creator in the days of our youth. When the evil day is drawn nigh, and you can say, I have no pleasure in them. Because look, you didn't put no seeds of corruption. You put seeds unto life. And that seeds unto life grows bigger and bigger. Praise God. And when you were the only way a man, when he gets that seed in him, that the life was going as he believes in it. Because you know what? There's a lot of words going around, Brother Greg. There's a lot of words going around. And if nobody in here to it, it's just the word. But when somebody hears to what God is saying and what God is doing now, then you are partakers of what God is doing. So when God gets ready, let me tell you something. It ain't when God gets ready. It's when you're already ready. Because let me tell you, when the things of God go forth, and you pull from it and you believe on it, no enemy can stand in your way. Because nothing can stand, when God created you, nothing can stand in your way to what God is doing. Because when God is doing something, you are part of it. And when, the, when you know, you see, the Bible says, and we got to realize where we at in Christ, because the Bible says that the world, it didn't say the church. Now, wherever part the world plays in the church, that's what it is. He says, the world seek it for a sign. Now, if they seek it for a sign, then that's the world. But if you're seeking for a sign, then you're part of the world. But the sign lies within you that they're looking for. And it has to do with it all. You know, Brother, Brother Gregor, I was, I was saying something the other day. And the Lord was showing me how that... Uh, the Bible speaks of, of the wise versions. He said five were foolish and five was wise. But see, they was all asleep. And when they was all asleep, they had the gifts. They had the gifts, but they didn't have the spirit. The ones that woke up with the oil had the spirit, and the ones that didn't wake up once that oil only had the gifts. Because the Bible says the gifts and calling the God are out repentance. You ain't got to be repentant to make a, my blind eyes open. Because the Bible says in that day, he's going to come and say, Lord, we, you know, we, we cast our devils in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Just because you call the name Jesus don't mean you know who he is. Hey, hey. When, when they get down there and they seen uh, trying to cast the devil out of the man, and he says, we cast it out in the name of Paul of Jesus. They said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? <laughs> you know, let me tell you, that's strong, folks. Them, them devils are real. When you, when you get out there and you realize you're calling on Jesus, but then you don't even know him. That, that right there, you have no power. You know the reason you don't know him? Because unbelief comes around. And when you call on the name of Jesus, you call it, you, you pray that prayer of faith. It don't matter how much you pray, Brother Greg, that person got to believe in God. Because you know what? If you ain't got no belief in God, then it's just words. But when that seed goes down into that heart and it takes hold of what God is doing and what is he saying to that church and all of a sudden the healing comes quickly because you believe and you're not burdened down with this weight of cares. Because you know, if you need healing, the Bible says a, a man will give all he got for his life. And if you believe in God and believe in Christ and believe in what God is doing, let me tell you something. You'll lay everything aside and say, Lord, here am I. This is your word. I believe on it. Because let me tell you something. You can have faith, and it don't got to have a whole lot of it. Because the Bible says if you have faith, there's a grain of mustard seed. You can say to that mountain, be thou removed. And the mountain is in your life can be moved. Because that's the only way you can start right now in your own life. And you got mountains and hills that you can't even climb. But they're invisible. They don't even matter. They, ain't even, they don't even exist when you got Christ Jesus because they're just a lying vanity. And it's a thing of a mind. And when you get that mind, get your mind out of the way, get that carnality out of the way and move it out of the way, you'll find out that you had life all the time. But it caused you to be weighted down because you can't have that strength to press on. 
But praise God, in Christ Jesus, you forget about your strength and realize that you're leaning on his strength. And when you're leaning on his strength, then you ain't have got no more. You ain't got no concern. It's like a baby in a, in a mother's arm, knowing that they're taken care of, knowing that they're going to be able to eat the next day. And they're, and mama's going to be up with me all night. Praise God. When the Lord, you don't realize the angels of God are watching around while you're laying in bed asleep. Because it's Christ, you know what? You got to have that faith in Christ Jesus that you're going to wake up that next morning. Because some folks don't wake up. But when you'll be able to wake up that next morning, Brother Greg, you'll be able to do what you're doing is lift your hands and say, Thank God! And I got another day. Praise God! And you can look all across a number of years and say, Thank God! I got 10 more years. Thank God! I got 15 more years. Why? Because you're heeded to the Word of God. And it lies in your heart and it brings forth life. In life abundantly. Yeah. Praise God. John and John says, In the beginning was the word. When that word forth came forth, it made created me and you, brother Greg. And when it created me and you, why can't we have the same power yeah. in God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I just wanted to share that little testimony of the Lord was showing me even how that lot, you know, how that it, it had to do with even even Abraham had to do with the coming of the Lord even down there with for Lot and pulling them out. How did then when they come out had to do with the virgin appearing hard or being translated out of here? Because you know what? When you peer in hard, the Bible says the peer in hard shall see the Lord. And if you peer in hard, you shall see God and you recognize your Redeemer. Because only one who's going to recognize him is you. You can't. You're too busy. You can't be busy looking worrying about brother so and so. You got to worry about yourself because what you, when you worry about brother and sister so and so, then you're lacking something. What about myself? I'm too busy worried about him and them, and then all of a sudden you find your own self to be lost because you're too busy worried about somebody else. But let me tell you, in this day and time, hour, you better do some praying now because the darkness is starting to fall and the night is starting to fall fast. And when it's starting to fall fast, you're going to find out whether you got Jesus or not. Whether you got Christ living in you or not. Because if it ain't, full stone be left without God. Hallelujah. Well, you know, uh, I, don't, I guess we'll turn it back over to Brother Greg. Or Brother Matthew. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, I really can't wait. I keep him around about another six, seven, eight months, and he might preach for us one night. Uh, what do y'all think? Y'all think he'll be ready to preach by then and quit testifying? Man, uh, did you tell Brother Michael on him? Ooh. You just, just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, here you get old uh, brother Stan to give you one of his tapes and just slip it over to brother Michael Beachy see what he's doing he's a product of brother George and brother Michael but most of all of the Lord Jesus Christ and his words going out he gave me a message tonight church don't look back huh don't seek what happened years ago. Yes. Go on up on the mountain where God is. Hallelujah. You know, he made the, quoted the scripture there that talked about where the Lord, which was Melchizedek, said, I don't know what's happening down there, but I need to go down there and look and check it out for myself. Now, you know that wasn't God because doesn't God know all things? Huh? Now think about it. Use a little common sense. Don't God know all things? There's nothing that's ever went on that God didn't know about, nothing that's going to happen that God doesn't know about. So when the Lord said that I need to go down there, we must understand that that was Melchizedek, which was the God on the earth at that time, walking in the Lord's place. So he goes down there, but you notice that he never does go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Huh? 
There's three of them walking, but only one stops over there at the tent doors and he sends his angels on over. See, y'all go on over there and handle that matter. Huh? Why in the world does everybody expect the pastor to do everything? Ain't I got some angels to send on to take care of some things? You have the same power and authority to call fire down from heaven. It's like Brother said a while ago. You can either have blessings or cursings. It's all up to what you have inside of you. And when they wouldn't accept the virtuous women, but they wanted to know men, the Bible said that the angels jerked Lot back inside. Pronounced damnation on them right then. And then people think that God's going to let their stupid, lustful pleasures of the same kind get away today. No. Damnation's been cast upon you. Lot was headed in it. His wife got called in it. But I like what, as he was ministering there, I... I caught that, that the angel snatched Lot out of the very presence of them homosexuals. He would have been caught right in the mess. He put his tent, opened his tent door every morning, straight in the uh, eyes of Sodom and Gomorrah until he walked right in there and was on their high council seats. But when it was all said and done, there was enough of God left inside of Lot that he snatched him back inside of the house. Pronounced damnation on the homosexual activities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the plains round about. The ones that wouldn't come against it. Sure did. And then we see, like he said, the wife representing the church wanted to stay in the mess and turn. Why? She didn't know good and well. She had children there. She had grandchildren there. Them son-in-laws didn't want to leave. It's in the Bible. Read it. They didn't want to leave. But the two virtuous struck out for the mountain. Let's keep our eyes on God. Not what's on behind, but what's laying in the future at the top of Mount Zion. Yeah, he gave me a message tonight. Church, don't look back. Don't look back, church. Let's go to the mountaintop. Amen. That was awesome.